So what I'm gonna do today is just do a few more problems uh, of the same kind of problems like we did last time. And so we are doing hypothesis testing. And in this hypothesis testing, we are doing the simplest kind of problem where the test is about a population average. So there's some assumption about some mean of some population characteristic and we're doing a test on that. Assuming that population is normal, this would be fairly common, very common to assume. However, we are doing a little bit of easy work by also assuming that the mean, the standard deviation of population is known. This is usually not the case and you know that what happens when you don't know it, then you get it from the sample standard deviation itself and then you use the t distribution so that's the only difference otherwise the concepts are same so wherever in today's formulas you use standard deviation of the population as a known quantity when you don't know it you get it from your sample and then you instead of doing the standard normal distribution you use the t distribution Anyway, let me just go ahead with a few example problem. So suppose uh, uh, someone claims that in a particular population, let's say they say for a particular racial group, the mean blood pressure is higher than 120. So they advise that if from this group you are getting people uh, in uh, showing up with higher blood with blood pressure higher than 120 then the physicians should not try to lower it because it's a, a fairly average value for this group of people so how can they prove it how to prove this assertion this is their hypothesis but to prove it they have to start with the null which is the opposite. So the null hypothesis, they take that the usual value of blood pressure, which is considered to be normal, 120. They assume that for this population as well, the mean, the population mean of the blood pressure is less than 120. Then the alternate hypothesis becomes that the mean is higher than 120. And if they are able to reject, reject it's not, they would have gathered evidence for H1. Or you can say, they would accept H1. And let's say they say, uh, prove it. So they're going to reject this with a significance. This is the significance they choose. 
0.05. So in other words, if they are able to reject H naught with a significance 0 0.05, then they would have accepted H1 with a significance 0 0.05. That means they would have accepted this claim, this hypothesis that the average blood pressure for this population is greater than 120 with a significance of 0 0.05, which means they have only a 5% chance of being wrong about it, of getting this result, of accepting this result just by a fluke, just by a statistical fluctuation. So what they need to do? They take a sample. Sample. Well, there's something else. They know that even that for everyone, no matter which population you take, the blood pressures, but the value you specify is only an average value. There is a statistic, there's a fluctuation in it, there's a standard deviation. Deviation. And for some reason, this is believed that it is 20 for everyone, for all populations, for this population as well, this is 20. So if you will pick a random person, even if the average is 120, you won't get 120 in general. It will be fluctuate around it with an average 120 and standard deviation 20. But now they are taking this to be their null, which they want to reject, but this is known. They want to reject with the significance 0 0.05. So they take a sample of, let's say 25 people from this population, healthy people. And what they find is that the sample mean, the mean blood pressure of these 25 people turned out to be 130. Now the question is, so they have got some evidence because in their sample, they got the average which was greater than 120, so it's, you, they're getting an evidence against the null. The null says that the average is less than 120 and they've got an evidence against the null. So they are moving towards rejecting the null, but with what, but, what, uh, but the question is, can they reject it with the given significance? So when alpha is 0 0.05, then they need to compute this critical value. Of the sample mean, which would be the boundary of the null hypothesis, which they want to reject. And since then the alternate hypothesis, this is the boundary. And the alternate is going to be greater than this, greater than this boundary value mu is equal to 120. So the critical value would be if they, this kind of normal distribution they're expecting. If they read a number in their sample somewhere here on the tail, then they suspect that there was a very little chance of this happening just by a statistical fluctuation, just by a statistical chance. So I will reject it. So that means they're looking for a critical number somewhere here. So they will take this mean value and add to it this thing.
uh, this is the standard deviation which is given. This n is the sample size because you know that when you have uh, a sample, then the standard deviation is, is reduced by the sample size for the sample mean. And what is this Z alpha? Where Z alpha is defined like this. So this critical value, Z is, mu is at 120, but Z is at zero, centered at zero. So that Z alpha, so that a number occurring beyond it has only a chance of alpha and alpha we are assuming 0 0.05. So that critical value beyond which a number coming up has only a probability of 0 0.05. So I can just go and look in the table. By the way, this would be same number, uh, not 0 0.05, Z sub 0 0.05. This would be same number because this is this tail. This Z 0 0.05 and this is, this area is 0 0.05. The same number I can find by saying P Z, let me write it here. Less than 0 0.05 is one minus 0 0.05, 0 0.95, right? So if I go and look up this table, so this would be, you can look it up in the table which gives you the cumulative probability for the standard normal to be equal to 0.95 because that's the blue area. So if I do that, I find out that the number is 1.65. So then this critical value of the sample mean becomes mu plus mu was 120 plus 1.65, which is, so I'm using this formula. Sigma is 20 divided by under root of 25 gives me a five, 120 plus 1.65 into four, it turns out to be 126.6. So reject H not if your sample size is bigger than, it's not sample, your sample average is bigger than this critical value. So you landed beyond this critical value somewhere here. And since you had a very little chance of this happening. So you rejected it. And since X bar was 130, so we can reject H naught with the significance Point zero five. You can safely reject it. No, with saying that there's only a five percent chance, we are within five percent chance of rejecting of being wrong. However, as we discussed last time, that they would have rejected it at point zero five significance level, even if they had got this value. So. If X bar were 126 point, let's say slightly bigger, 65, they could still 
reject it, reject H naught with the significance alpha is equal to 0 0.05 because they will, they are still, they still got a number higher than the critical value. But they got even more evidence. The evidence in their hand is even stronger. So that means if they were given a higher significance level, or the way it is stated, it's not called higher. If they were given a smaller significance level, they could have even ejected it with that. So what they want to report instead is the smallest significance level at which they could reject H naught given the sample average they got. So, that is called the p value. So since it is rejected with more evidence than required for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 significance, maybe we can reduce the significance more and report what is the minimum alpha. So minimum alpha for which it's not could still be rejected. given this sample mean which they got. That is called the p-value. p-value of this result. What is the result? They got a sample and they made a decision. That result has a corresponding p-value. And what is it? It's that the smallest significance level at which you can reject H naught. And there's no reason not to report it because if your evidence is stronger than required, then you should say that it is more stronger and how much strong that is decided by the p-value. So how can you compute the p-value? So obviously what you want is you put the critical value equal to the sample mean you got, because then you will be right at the boundary at the verge of rejecting it. So that was 130. And then when I put this critical value, in this formula. So over here, now I put 130, mu was 120, which I wanted to reject. Now this Z alpha is not known now. Z alpha is now, uh, I will compute from here. Sigma is given, it was, 20 and this is 5. So from here, I get 10 over 4 is Z alpha. So Z alpha is 2.5. That means I have to find that alpha for which Z alpha is 2.5. That means I can, uh, there is some Z is zero. I know that Z critical is 2.5. So I just want to compute when Z alpha is 2.5, what is this area? Uh, 
So, well, this is wrong. I should say 2.5, and that probability is equal to alpha. So, given this at z alpha, which I computed from here, what is alpha? That's the question. And alpha is just this area. And this area would also be z less than this value and one minus alpha. So if I compute it, let me change the share. So I am given this Z value, which is 2.5. And I just compute what is the cumulative probability. So it's 0 0.994. So this number is 0.994. That means alpha is 1 minus 0.994. So it's 0 0.006. So therefore, the p value is 0 0.006. In other words, I could reject H0 with a much smaller significance. So I have a much stronger evidence in favor of H1. So significance in more colloquial language, you can say significance of this result. The result is saying that H0 is rejected. H1 is accepted. And the significance of this result is given by this p-value, which is 0 0.006. Smaller the p-value, Stronger is the evidence in favor of your result. And result is, in this case, always is not is rejected. Now suppose someone else, they didn't believe in your results, they picked another sample. Again of 25. And when they measured, obviously even the sample mean is a random variable. They're not gonna get the number you got. So suppose they got 128. They also have evidence in support of rejecting H0. And they can also, they also reject H0 with a significance. They can reject with a significance 0.05 original significance because in that case our critical value was uh, 126. They got a number higher than 126.6 so they can reject with a significance point zero 0.05 but what is the p-value of the result? P value for them is they take this X bar, which they got to be X critical value. 
it is 128. This was mu. Z alpha and sigma over root n. This is 120. So they get sigma over under root n was 20 over 5. So 8 over 4 is z alpha. So z alpha is 2. And now they have to find alpha by this. or by this and again you go to the calculator or to the table this time i have to plug in two to be the critical value And I get a number 0.977. So that means alpha is 0.977 is equal to 0 0.023. And this is your p value. Point zero two three. So they have a p value which is stronger because it's smaller than the significance level, but they got a p value different from you, slightly higher than you. Because every sample is going to give a different sample mean. So from every sample, you will get a slightly different p value. P value is also a statistical variable is a random variable. You don't get the same number every time. So that's why you say that the p-value of this result. I got this sample, and based on this sample, I am rejecting it, and my p-value based on this result, this sample is this. Someone, again, doing a test will get a different p-value. Yeah, Shahrukh, you have a question? Uh, yeah. My question is mu to 120, you uh, 130. No, no, I raised it. I raised it. I put it 120 back. No, no, you said it's super. Uh -huh. um, yeah, actually, critical value. Okay, yeah. okay. Because the critical value, because this was the sample mean, what they got. So any question about it? Let me probably write it. P-value will be different for every new sample. Because it depends on the sample mean you get. And that is a random number. Random variable. So any question so far? Sir, 126.6 kya tha? Yeah, 126.6 was the critical value with the significance level 0 0.05. Okay, okay. Sir, I think someone wrote a question in the chat box. What was the question? Uh, 
Where is the chat box? Will the exam be online or not? I'll probably tell you by tomorrow. I have to, because I'm not sure how the things are going. Because the the way, like in in other cities, they have closed off universities again. So there's always a chance that that may happen here as well. And personally, I would like to be sure so that uh, people are not confused. So I'm slightly inclined towards online. And because I also think like for this course, it would be easier. People won't need to bring calculators. I wouldn't have to give them the tables. But again, then it's slightly sometimes it becomes a little. Uh, sir, I think, uh, sir, I think IB will give uh, an option to teachers because yeah. a lot of our teachers are taking online exams. They've already told us. What do people prefer? You want to give online or physical? Uh, sir, I think online is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if I do the online, this time the online will not be like you can't spend two two days. I will make yeah, definitely probably a two. Yes, sir. Just give us five, just give us four three three to four hours. Yeah, three to four hour exam. And I will have very strict check on copying because you know, like it's it's like a very easy job for me to pick up. Like if someone has copied, it's, it's not a big deal at all. It's just that when someone does it, um, it becomes a bit hard to report them. But this time I'm gonna send out a strong warning. If someone copies, then I'll I'll catch them and report them. Then it's between them and the examination department. So if that is clear, if people are fine with that, then let's go for the online. Now, coming back here, let's do another example. So I'm, I'm going to send out an email regarding this tomorrow because let me talk to the chair in the department and if he agrees, then I'll send out an email by tomorrow and to just to say one way or the other. But I'm inclined towards online. So suppose uh, there is a company and they market uh, medicine for the diabetes patients. And it says that it keeps the HbA1c, which is a critical marker for the diabetic patients, uh, the chemical in blood, below level six. And it is known that there is a fluctuation of standard deviation of 0.6 and they want to prove it. So for the diabetic patients, usually these HbA1c levels are way higher, like going into seven. And if they can be managed below six, that's a success. And that's what they want to prove. So they take the null hypothesis that people on this medicine, their average HbA1c is bigger than six. And the alternate is that it is less than six. So they would like to reject it, which will lead to acceptance of H1 that they have evidence in support of that it does reduce the H1, HbA1c, keeps it below a certain critical level. And they want to test it, test this hypothesis. 
suppose they have a sample of 16 patients and when they put them on this medicine and do the HbA1c the average value comes out to be 5.8 now uh, looking over here and at this number, since the average was less than this hypothesis, which they had assumed that mu is greater than six. So they have evidence in support of the fact that it keeps the HbA1c below six. They have evidence in support of rejecting H0, the null hypothesis. But the question, critical question is, is this established with a significance of 0 0.05. So have evidence in support of H1 or in support of rejecting H0, but is it significant enough? In other words, words, is this result, if the result is that it reduces H1BC, it, it keeps it below six, is this result that the medicine keeps it below six on average is this result established with a significance point zero five Now to do that again, you have, what you have to do, you have to compute this critical value, mu plus this z bar 0 0.05. This is the standard deviation and under root 16 gives me a four here. But what is this number? This time, This is the assumed H naught value mu. Your alternate hypothesis is that it is less than this. So you're looking for this tail. You are looking for values falling here. And when they fall way far on the left-hand side of this, of the normal, on the left tail at the far end, only then you have enough significance to reject it. So you're looking for a number here. So that means this critical value, which I denote by Z bar because it's on the left tail. So what is this saying? This is just this statement that the probability of Z being less than, last time it was greater than, is equal to 0 0.05. And if I compute this number, let's compute this number. It will show you something. So because it's Z less than uh, a critical value equal to a probability because it's less than, so it's directly the cumulative probability. And the cumulative probability is 0 0.05. So it gives me a negative number, minus 
which makes perfect sense because this standard normal is centered at zero. So if I look towards the left hand side of the central line, those will all be negative numbers. So a number on the left tail will be negative. So critical number I subtract from this value and this makes perfect sense because I'm assuming that this number, this average, it remains over here. And if I find a number on the left side in my sample, then I reject it. So my X bar, so I will should be putting some critical value on this side. And if X bar is even less than this, not greater, because now I'm looking for to reject on the other side when the mean is less. So in my sample, I should be seeing the number less than the critical value. And even the critical value you compute by subtracting, essentially subtracting a number because I got a negative number here. So six minus four, five point six over four. So this gives me up to two decimals 0.25. Five point seven five. So my sample mean, although it had evidence for rejecting, but it's not enough. X bar is greater than X C because X bar was five point eight, which is greater than five point seven five. So I can't reject. It's not at this significance. By the way, this same number you could have calculated instead of using this formula. Since if I write this number, this critical number Z 0 0.05 with this area 0 0.05. And this is defined as before Z is greater than compared with this. Then I know this number this number has to be equal to one point six four five why because it's a symmetric graph normal is a symmetric distribution if i'll get a certain area under this for a certain number like in this case minus one point six four five i'll get the same area on the other side at the same distance and at the same distance on the other side would be a positive number. So the same thing I can write by putting a minus by hand and just computing this. Because Z bar 0 0.05 is equal to Z 0 0.05. Or in general, Z bar alpha is equal to Sorry, with a minus, minus Z alpha. So I wasn't able to reject H naught, although there was evidence, but wasn't able to reject it at the desired significance level. But since there's some evidence, well, they can say, I wasn't, we were not able to reject it at this significance level, but there is evidence and let's report that evidence. So how do you report it? By just computing the p-value that at what significance level this hypothesis is rejected. So 
there still is evidence that this medicine keeps HbA1c below 6 but what is the significance of that evidence? So that would be the p-value. And how do you compute the p-value? Again, just take your x bar, put it equal to the critical value. And then use the same formula. So my sample mean was 5.8. The number which I have to reject mu is 6. And you can see automatically because this is less than this. So I get a minus 0.2 times 4 over 0.6 z bar p. So z bar p is minus 1.33. So in the standard normal, this is z equals 0. There is some number here, minus 1.33. And I want to know this area. That would be the p value. So how can I do that? Let's again go to here. My critical value, that is known to me, is minus 1.33. And I compute the probability is 0 0.092. And in this case, I don't have to subtract one, it's directly this. So P value, let me write P of Z less than is 0 0.092. This implies P value is 0 0.092. So they have evidence against the null hypothesis and the p-value of that evidence is 0 0.092. Not very strong, but it is there. So about 10% chance of being wrong. So any question so far? Let me go to another example. So suppose uh, it is desired for some patients that a certain chemical is kept at a mean value of some units, 200. But it is known that when this chemical goes in, there's, they are probably admitted in a, they are admitted in different hospitals and there's some procedure which keeps this chemical to some machinery at two, it's injected and tried to kept at 200. 
However, when the chemical goes in, the patient's body responds in a certain ways. And because of that response, it is known that there's a fluctuation, a standard deviation of five. The chemical can go up by five units and go down by five units. Now, the some people who want who are quality control and they want to keep a track that these procedures are being run properly they go and they take a sample of 36 patients who are undergoing this treatment and they find that the average value is 196 And they are worried. They say, well, we were told, we told you that the average value should be maintained at 200, but your procedure is keeping it low. We don't want it. And the, the thing is they don't want it to go up or go down. So the hospital claims, well, you know, you see this fluctuation. So they, these are expected. So this is just by a chance but they have to do a proper statistical analysis. So in this case, the null hypothesis, which the hospital is claiming that this is true, they're saying that the mu is at 200. And the alternate in this case, it's up to you, it's up to, it it's, depends on your analysis, what you really want to do. So the alternate we are saying is that mu is not equal to 200 because the chemical has to be maintained at 200. So anything which is not 200 is rejecting our null. But since there is a normal distribution, so mu is 200, going on either side is not acceptable. But because of fluctuations, because of normal distribution, it can land on either side. Both chances are there. So this kind of alternate hypothesis is called two-sided alternate hypothesis. So suppose let, let's forget about this one for now. Suppose the test hasn't been run and they have to decide that when we do a test on these 36 patients, what, what critical values, what values for the sample mean we see to reject H0. Now you can reject it if, if you get see smaller numbers and you can reject it if you see higher numbers. And obviously you have a significance. So suppose you want to do it with a significance of 0 0.01. The people at hospital, they don't, they're not ready to admit that the process is wrong. So they want to see really small significance. They say it's just happening by chance. So they want a very small significance to believe you. <coughs> well, let me say 0 0.02. This is the significance you want, 0 0.02. But this significance you have to divide in the left tail and the right tail because any one of them can happen. So when you divide it, 0 0.01 area you give to this and 0 0.01 area you give to this. So a very big number or a very small number, both will reject it. So then you compute this Z alpha by two. Why Z alpha by two is this critical number. So Z greater than 
is alpha by two. And in our case, this is Z point zero one is equal to point zero one. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, you haven't changed the screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so where I was. Did you get this? Sir, can you go over the example again, please? Yeah. So I get, I guess I computed this from the screen. And so what was this? This was, I had computed this critical value for my, I had got this number in my sample and based on this, I was trying to compute the P value. So I put in these numbers, I got a critical value, which was negative, which should be because I'm looking at the left tail because I'm looking for numbers which are smaller than this value, than this value. Because my null hypothesis is that mu is greater than six. So in order to reject it, I should be seeing numbers smaller than six. So that's why I have to subtract something from it. And it turns out you don't have to do anything. It's just the formulas give you a negative number. So I compute it using that screen, this number, this probability that when Z is less than this value, it should be minus, minus 1.33, this one. So what is this area? And it gave me the area 0 0.092. So that is your P value. So they, in that example, you had evidence in favor of rejecting H0, but it wasn't strong enough to reject it at 0 0.05 significance level, but you compute it at what significance level you can still reject it. And the minimum you got is the p-value. And minimum you will get by putting the critical value equal to what you got in your sample. And so that's what you got. Now in this new example, I'm saying that there's, it is desired that a certain chemical is kept, is injected into body and you can't have it more or less it is desired to keep it at a mean value, a certain mean value of 200, but there's some natural fluctuation because of patient response with a standard deviation of five. And a quality control team goes in to check if they are maintaining, the hospital is maintaining it at 200 mean value or not. So they pick a sample of 36 people. Now your hypothesis is which you want to reject because the hospital is adamant that they are doing everything right and it is maintained at 200 except for these natural fluctuations. So the mean is of the population 200. So you want to reject it and you want to reject it with a very small significance level. That means with a very high uh, authority. So you choose a significance of 0 0.02. But the alternate hypothesis in this case, because of the nature of the problem is because you want to maintain it. They want to maintain it at a fixed number. So the alternate is that the number is not this. So if you get a sample mean, which is much larger than this, or much smaller than this, you reject your null hypothesis in both cases. So that's what this figure is showing. So the mean is 200, that's what you expect. But the fluctuations here can take it either higher or smaller. But if you see a very large fluctuation or a very small, uh, a, a very large fluctuation on either side 
on the right or on the left, then you will be tempted to reject the hypothesis that it is being maintained at 200. So that means the alternate possibilities are on both sides. So in that case, you divide your significance on the left-hand tail and on the right-hand tail, because both are possible. So when I divide it e equally, I put 0 0.01 on the left and 0 0.01 on the right. And whatever number I get here, this number because of symmetry would be just minus the same number. So why do we take 0 0.02 as our- it's, it's, it's your choice. It's your choice that with how much certainty you want to reject it. So it may be like the hospital were claiming, well, like we, we won't, you are come you have come here to uh bad mouth us and you want to accuse us but we won't accept your result until you prove it with a very high certainty so they demand that you have to disprove us with a significance level of 0 0.02 there's no fundamental reason it's just about how much evidence you have how much evidence you want. When you choose alpha beforehand, then it's your choice how much evidence you want. If you don't choose alpha, instead you do a test and you compute P, then what you are saying is that given my sample, how much evidence I have. So there's a difference. How much evidence you want and how much evidence you have. So this is about how much evidence you want. So it was decided to have it 0 0.02. So you have to divide it at the front and the end tail. And then I just have to find this critical value. This would be the negative of that. So when I find it, this number turns out to be, I'm not gonna go to that screen. You can just do it. This is 2.326. So that means you will now have two critical values. Critical value upper on the right-hand side, which would be this mean value, which was the H naught, the null hypothesis, plus this formula. This is your Z alpha by two. This is your sigma divided by six because this is your under root N. And your lower critical value would be mu minus this number. So this turns out to be, let me do this. One point nine four mu was uh, two hundred minus this number is one point nine four so this is uh, one ninety eight point six sorry this is plus so this number is 201.94 while this number is 200 minus 1.94 so this is 
So that means if you see a number in your sample greater than, if X bar is greater than reject H naught with a significance If X bar turns out to be less than this lower critical value, even then reject H naught with a significance 0 0.02. So suppose if they in the sample they had gotten 196. Now the hospital would be tempted to say, well, is this 196 is within this standard deviation, but you know that's not how it works. With this standard deviation and with this large sample size, there was a very small probability. There was only a 2% probability that you will see a number less than this or a number bigger than this. With a 98% chance, you should be seeing a number between this. If the mean was truly equal to 200. So if you see a, this, this number, you reject it. Reject that claim. So any question? So I'm going to stop here. I had a question regarding yeah. the assignment. Say again about the assignment. I a, yeah, I had a question regarding the assignment. Okay, let me stop the recording, then you can ask me. Okay. Wait. Uh,